नमस्ते हमेशा खुश रहो बुटिया हो माय सेल्फ डॉक्टर हिना मेवाड़ा असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फैकल्टी ऑफ आयुर्वेदिक साइंस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ प्रकृति एंड स्त्री रोग ज्योति विद्यापीठ वुमेन्स यूनिवर्सिटी इन टुडे सेशन आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द फाइब्रॉइड इन यूटरस सो यूटराइन फाइब्रॉइड इज आल्सो कॉल्ड लियोमायोमा मायोमा और फाइब्रोमायोमा इट इज अ बिनाइन नियोप्लाज्मा ऑफ मस्कुलर वॉल ऑफ यूटरस कंपोज्ड प्राइमरीली बाय द स्मूथ मसल फाइबर द फाइब्रॉइड इज द कॉमनेस्ट बिनाइन ट्यूमर ऑफ यूटरस एंड इट इज आल्सो द कॉमनेस्ट बिनाइन सॉलिड ट्यूमर इन फीमेल द 20% ऑफ वुमेन एट द एज ऑफ 30 हैव गॉट फाइब्रॉइड इन देयर वूम and the most of them means uh, 50% remain asymptomatic and in 50% the fibroid may be symptomatic the prevalence is highest between 35 to 45 years now uh, the um, etiology of fibroid the etiology is still unclear uh, or unknown then how to uh, occur the fibroid uh, मे बी फैमिली पॉजिटिव फैमिली हिस्ट्री आर देयर और मे बी इट इज ड्यू टू द जेनेटिक अल्ट्रेशन मीन्स ड्यू टू द क्रोमोजोमल एबनॉर्मेलिटी विच इज फाउंड इन फोर्टी परसेंट ऑफ केसेज पर्टिकुलरली द क्रोमोजोम सिक्स एंड सेवन रीअरेंजमेंट और डिलेशन और सोमेटिक म्यूटेशन इन द मायोमेट्रियल सेल कॉज इज द फाइब्रॉइड एंड न्यूटेरस and the hormonal or other chemicals like epidermal growth factor insulin like growth factor first and transforming growth factor uh, these all are stimulate the growth of leiomyoma either directly or via estrogen growth of fibroid is depend on the estrogen so uh, during the menarche and during the menopause there are no more estrogen so no fibroid occur during menopause and menarche uh, but in the case of uh, repro uh, but in the case of reproductive age and during pregnancy and during uh, childbirth there is a increased chances of the uh, occurring fibroid because of high estrogen level now what are the risk factor uh, the positive family uh, history uh, are the high risk black women and the pregnancy and childbirth and the uh, nulliparity state obesity and women who use uh, who uses oral contraceptive are at high risk for the uh, occurring fibroid multiparity and risk smoking reduces the risk of fibroid now what are the types of fibroid the types are classified by anatomical location there are two types body fibroid and uh, cervical fibroid body fibroid are further divided into three parts which is depends on the layer of the fibroid uh, layer of the uterus mm, this and this is interstitial fibroid which is found in 75% of cases sub serous uh, 15% and sub mucous which is found in 5% of cases the sub serous is further divided into sub mucous uh, sub serous broad ligament means pseudo fibroid and wandering means parasitic fibroid sub mucous are of two type that is sessile and pedunculated cervical fibroid are of four types depend on the location anterior cervical fibroid posterior central and lateral cervical fibroid see in this diagram this is the most common fibroid that is interstitial or intramural fibroid when uh, interstitial fibroid is pushed outward toward the peritoneal cavity then it uh, causes sub serous pedunculated fibroid with uh which is uh, partially or completely covered by the peritoneum when the subserous fibroid is uh, covered completely by the peritoneum and uh, usually at the peduncle then it is called the subserous pedunculated fibroid 
on rare occasion when the pedicle may be torn then the fibroid get its nourishment from the uh, mesenteric adhesions um, or omentum then it is called wandering or parasitic fibroid and uh, in some cases when the fib intramural fibroid may be pushed into the layer of broad ligament then it is called broad ligament fibroid or folds or pseudo fibroid when interstitial fibroid pushed toward the uterine cavity see in this uh, diagram this is the some mucus fibroid um, when the intramural fibroid when pushes toward the uterine cavity and uh, it is lying beneath the uh, endometrium then it is called some mucus fibroid Pedunculated submucous fibroid may um, comes out through cervix. See in this diagram, this is the submucous pedunculated fib uh, fibroid, which is uh, um, come out through the cervix. And the submucous fibroid uh, make the uterine cavity irregular and distorted. Um, this is the cavity which is irregular and distorted because of some mucus fibroid uh, seen this diagram also this is the some mucus fibroid and uh, distorted the uterine cavity so the chances of uh, menorrhagia and menometrorrhagia are the more in some mucus fibroid this is the different types of fibroid uh, this is the submucous fibroid in which the uterine cavity symmetrically enlarges, and this is the subserous fibroid, and this is the cervical fibroid. Now, what are the secondary changes occur in the fibroid? There may be degeneration in the form of hyaline degeneration, which is most common, cystic degeneration, calcification, fatty degeneration red degeneration and septic degeneration uh, hyaline degeneration um, is the most common uh, found in 65 percent of the patient uh, in hyaline degeneration the central part of tumor uh, um, is be, um, become hyalinated because it is less vascular in cystic degeneration there is a liquefaction of area with uh, hyaline changes so the cystic species uh, uh, are found in the fibroid in fatty degeneration there is a fat globule are deposited in the muscle cell it is foundly, uh, it is mainly found after the menopause in calcification uh, whole whole fibroid is converted into the calcified mass which is called womb stone because there is a party, party um, there is a precipitation of calcium carbonate or phosphate within a tumor uh, rare degeneration is mostly occur in the pregnancy uh, in neck dye examination, the rare degenerated uh, red degenerative changes uh, revealing like a row beef appearance and the uh, red color is due to the uh, hemolyzed red cells and hemoglobin which is present in the fibroid and septic in, uh, degeneration occur because of infection. The other secondary changes uh, in fibroid occur in the form of infection or uh, there may be atrophy, the fibroid may necrosis or there may be a vascular changes or there may be a sarcomatous changes which is rarely occur uh, in le less than 0.1% of cases. Now, what are the clinical features of the fibroid? In 75% cases of the fibroid, um, there
there is no any symptom occur means uh, 75% remain asymptomatic in 25% cases uh, there may be a menstrual abnormality in the form of menorrhagia which is found in 30% cases and in the form of met metrorrhagia or irregular bleeding menorrhagia is because of uh, increased surface area of the endometrium because of fibroid or uh, in um, the uh, uterine contractibility is irregular because of uh, congestion and uh, dilatation of the sub uh, sub subsequent endometrial venous plexuses or because of endometrial hyperplasia the metrorrhagia is because of ulceration of cell mucus fibroid and uh, uh, torn vessels from the sloughing uh, sloughing base of polyp or may be associated with endometrial carcinoma the other features are dysmenorrhea uh, infertility infertility is found in 30% of cases uh, it may be due to the uterine and the tubal factor uh, because of uh, uterine cavity distortion or elongation the sperm ascent is uh, difficult um, so the infertility occur and in case of uh, congestion of dilatation of um, in case of congestion, there is a defective negation in the endometrium and infertility occur. And there may be a cornual block due to the fibroid, which further causes infertility. Pain in lower abdomen, abdominal swelling and pressure symptoms like uh, um, uh, hydrouretor and uh, infection of the uh, Infection of the urinary tract and pilitis, hydronephrotic changes are occur in the patient. During the abdom abdominal examination, the fibroid feels firm, more toward hard, maybe in cystic or, or in cystic degeneration. Margin are well defined, except the lower pole. And, and there may be a surface is nodular uh, and uniformly enlarged in a single fibroid and mobility is restricted from above downward but can be moved from side to side. In the perkish percussion, the fibroid swelling is dull in nature. In bimanual examination, the fibroid reveals uterine irregularly, uh, uterus irregularly enlarged. Uterus is not uh, separated from the swelling, um, means tumor, uh, and as such, uh, a groove is not felt between the uterus and the masses, means uh, the uterus and mass uh, are feel, uh, feel uh, in a one uh, growth, not separately the cervix move with the movement of tumor which is felt per abdomen because the fibroid is in the cavity of the uterus now what are the investigations which are done in fibroid that is cbc uh, clotting time and bleeding time which is done uh, to know the anemic, uh, anemic condition or general condition and uh, to know uh, about the uh, coagulatory disorder. In acute degenerative fibroid and infection, there is a rise in ESR and leukocyte uh, WBCs and uh, temperature is increasing in the case of infection. Pelvic USG confirms the diagnosis. Saline hysterosonography can identify some mucous myoma uh, that may be missed on ultrasound. Hysterosalpingography will show inter intrauterine leomyomas and uh, uh, magnetic resonance imaging um, are the highly accurate in delineating the size, location, and number of myomas, but not always 
necessary. MRI is a help, uh, helpful uh, to know the adenomyosis from fibroid uh, differentiation. Uh, laparoscopy and his hysteroscopy are the other method to diagnose the fibroid. Laparoscopy occurs when the size is less than 12 weeks and uh, associated with the pelvic pain and infertility. Hysteroscopy is done to detect submucous fibroid and uh, uterine curatis is uh, other way to detect fibroid. Mm, this picture uh, shows USG in, uh, fibroid in the USG. This is the hysteroscopic view of the fibroid seen this uh, picture. And this is the laparoscopic view of the fibroid. This is the fibroid. The treatment of fibroid depend on age, parity, uh, pregnancy status, desire for future pregnancy, general health, symptom, size, and location. Uh, in menopausal age, there is no need of uh, any treatment of fibroid. Um, in pregnancy state, uh, carefully treat the fibroid. And when the symptoms are more than uh, treatment occur, when there is a asymptomatic case, there is, uh, so the no, uh, no any need of treatment, a regular supervision is done. When the fibroid is uh, of small sizes, then there is no need of treatment. Uh, regular supervision is done and uh, USG is done in every six months. In mo uh, the most of cases of fibroid, like 75% uh, are asymptomatic, so there is no uh, any need of treatment. In postmenopausal women, also no need of treatment. Uh, other causes of pelvic mass must be excluded before the before the treatment of the fibroid, and the diagnosis must be certain. Initial follow-up every six months is to be done to determine the rate of growth of the myoma. The line of treatment is medication, uterine artery emboli embolization, and surgery. So first of all, medicines like oral contraceptive pills, GnRH agonist, the anti-hormonal drug like uh, mifepristone, denazol, um, which is the uh, which causes amenorrhea or antifibrinolytic anti like tranexamic acid and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory agents or progesterone receptor modulator named ileum used in the treatment of the fibroid. The med medical management uh, is to be done to improve menorrhagia and to correct anemia before surgery and to minimize the size and vascularity of the tumor in order to facilitate surgery and in selected cases where infertility is found um, now surgical treatment uh, in the form of uh, myomectomy and hysterectomy myomectomy is done uh, in three ways open myomectomy, laparoscopic myomectomy, and hysteroscopic myomectomy. Uh, myomectomy is done either abdominal or vaginal. Myomectomy is the enucleation of the myomata from the uterus and leaving behind a potentially functioning organ which is capable to produce um, for, uh, future reproduction. Hysterectomy is uh, done in um, cases where all the treatment of uh, fibroid are uh, failed and uh, there is no need of um, uh, any, any more child and uh, the age of women is uh, more than 40. 
in uterine artery embolism the uterine artery are occluded by injecting polyvinyl alcohol particles through percutaneous femoral catheterization which causes further avascular necrosis followed by shrinkage of the fibroid see in this diagram this is the uterine artery and this is the branches of the uterine artery and uh, uh, this is the femoral catheter which is inserted in the uterine artery and through femoral uh, catheter polyvinyl alcohol particle is injected which is occluded in the uh, branches of the artery and causes necrosis followed uh, and because of necrosis the fibroid is shrinked now what are the complications of the fibroid there may be menorrhagia and abdominal pain uh, there may be a chances of premature birth and labor problems miscarriages uh, infertility may be occur fibroid changes in into leiomyosarcoma means uh, carcinoma of the myometrium uh, twisting of the fibroid may be occur there may be a chances of uh, anemia or urinary tract infection in in the condition of fibroid c section may be needed and uh, some pregnant women with fibroid have heavy bleeding immediately after giving birth so thank you for listening me this session is powered by digital version 2.0 jyoti vidyapeet women's university if you uh, hope you all are satisfied with my session if you have any queries related to this session please write in comment box so i will resolve thank you so much.